How's it going everybody? This is Cameron White with White Light Astrology giving you guys your January 2019 horoscope for Capricorn. Capricorn, happy birthday for one. Welcome to the new year. Um, I really do think that this month's going to be kind of weird for you guys. Like, you got a lot of stuff going on in your first house and there's a lot of things that are going to be addressed and I know that you know that. And you also have some transits to your 12th house that are pretty cool. Like, let's just get into it because this month's kind of weird for you guys on starting on January 1st we have Mars entering Aries um this is entering your fourth house about your family your parents your you know your ancestry uh also has to do with your home life you know where you live your house also has to do with where you center yourself you know where you ground yourself and your sense of who you are and as Mars enters Aries it's going into its home sign where Mars can do Mars things that the best that Mars can do. And Mars is all about, you know, engaging. He's all about uh, attacking, not in the sense of just like, you know, not only in a war and like a violent sense, which he does, but just going after things, achieving things, moving ahead. But he also caused problems. He causes aggression. He causes fights. He has, he wants to sever. He wants to cut. He wants to inflammate. And so as Mars enters this part of your chart, I think this is where it's going to become very weird because Mars is, you know, wanting you to, you know, have some, you know, things are probably going to be a little bit more active going on in your household, maybe dealing with a little bit more argumentations. And I think that's what a lot of it is going to be. But a lot of it also is going to be like things just kind of happening in your home life, feeling a little bit more centered, feeling a little bit more grounded and feeling like you, you're not in like a sluggish mood anymore. Like you actually have the energy to achieve things and go for things. However, on January 1st as well, we also have the sun conjoining Saturn in your first house. And I really think that this is going to be a big time to really look at yourself and look at where are you limiting yourself and what is really holding you down. Because the Saturn is flying forward now, he's out of shadow, sun hitting it is basically restarting, like not necessarily restarting, but refreshing the Saturn movement of the synodic cycle for him. And so as Saturn, or as the sun hits Saturn, I think this is really realizing a lot of what is, like what, how are you limiting yourself right now? What are, what are you holding back? What do you need to also discipline yourself on? What do you also need to like, you know, where do you need to kind of basically get your shit together? Because Saturn is in your first house. And... As the Sun Saturn thing hits, I think this is just going to be kind of, you know, new challenges are arising, bigger problems, not necessarily like, you know, I'm not saying you have bigger problems now, but like the idea that things are a lot more serious are, that's what it's going to feel like moving ahead. Moving ahead though, on January 5th, we have the new moon and it's a solar eclipse in Capricorn that's happening. Mercury is also happening on January, uh, Mercury is also happening, Mercury is also moving into Capricorn on January 5th as well. And so as we have, uh, what did I just say? Oh yeah, the new moon, the solar eclipse in Capricorn. So as we have this uh, new moon in Capricorn, where new moon's about resetting intentions, addressing one sign, one specific house topic. Um, we also have this eclipse going on where this is the south node that we're talking about. And the south node is, you know, our past, what we are naturally good at, what we have on our backs, but what we not necessarily are heading towards, but we're going towards a different direction. It's just where we've been and where we've came from, what's our past. And as the south node is in your guys' first house now, I think you guys are really starting to learn about letting go certain aspects of yourself that you've held yourself together with for a long time but just don't really work anymore and you have to implement new things. And I think this new moon in Capricorn is really like, it's time. Like, how are we going to implement this? Where are you going to reset these intentions? And you know that it's going to, I mean, this new moon's also going to be hitting Saturn. Mercury's going to be in Capricorn as well, where Mercury's going to be in your first house. You're going to be more self-expressive. You're going to be more self-understanding, more clear about, you know, who you are and what you want and things like that. And it's going to be at a very surface level, very understandable and tangible level. I do think that this new moon is basically like, time to go. Like, time to make those changes, time to see that reflection. However, on January 7th, moving ahead, we have Venus going into Sagittarius, where Venus isn't in your 11th house anymore. This isn't about friends. The 12th house is about hidden enemies. The 12th house is about the subconscious and things that you repress and things that you don't always acknowledge. And Venus is about value. She wants to express and she wants to love and she wants to put things together. And as she's in Sagittarius, she's in the sign that's very exploring, very adventurous, very excited, very thirsty and hungry for understanding things. And as Venus goes into your 12th house, I really think that this is gonna be a time of a deep inner reflection of like, what do you believe? What do you want? 
What do you value? And what does that really mean? Because Jupiter is also in your 12th house too, where you're kind of like, hmm, like, what do I really believe? What is coming up for me? What do I not really repress? What don't I always acknowledge? And this is Sagittarius that we're talking about. Like, this is pretty positive stuff. This is a lot more philosophical and spiritual, uh, like, in-depth, like, thinking. So when Venus goes into it, I think that's really going to set the tone for this month of, like, really deep inner reflection on your beliefs and kind of getting really serious on a philosophical level. However, also on January 7th, we have Uranus going direct in your fourth house, where this is talking about, you know, active energy, big ups and downs, you know, explosions, the unexpected in that area of your home life, your family life, your private life, your parents. Um, this also has to do with where you're centering yourself. So Uranus may give you kind of like a quick boost, like a quick like, whoa, like I, I haven't felt this way. Like I'm kind of like movable now. Um, I can kind of like do things I feel that energy to accomplish. So that would be pretty cool. But um, <laughs> I was just thinking in my head, I'm like, Uranus in the fourth house. Like, oh, your parents blow up. Just kidding, that's not gonna happen. But that would be funny. Um, no, it wouldn't, just kidding. Anyway, um, I'm having too much fun right now. Mercury is the next thing, or Mercury conjoining Saturn is the next big thing. A couple days later on January 11th, Mercury's gonna conjoin Saturn. This is in your first house. Saturn again, you know, the sun hits Saturn, you're like, oh, like I understand where I'm limiting myself. I understand where I need to discipline myself and I really need to make these big changes to myself. Um, as Mercury hits Saturn, Mercury's basically delivering the Saturn message to you saying like, okay, like this is what needs to be addressed. This is what needs to be implemented. This is how it's kind of like, you know, when you have, have you seen that show Bar Rescue where that guy just comes in, he's like, you run your business like shit. This is how you're supposed to do it. Like that's Mercury hitting Saturn in your first house. Like this is what the issues are. Be aware of them, but let's address them and let's actually like work on them. And again, Mercury's communicating the message of Saturn where it's gonna feel hardcore, it's gonna feel like ugh, and like cringy, but he's also like, if you just do the work and you just, you know, really discipline yourself on doing that, like you can make these changes and you just can't be afraid of being vulnerable and you can't be afraid of like, you know, Saturn is your first house, you can feel like you gotta be all strong. Like, dude, just let yourself be vulnerable. Just let yourself go through the chain, like change. Let Saturn beat you up for a second so you can get out of it. Anyway, January 16th, a couple days later, the sun will hit the south node. As the sun hits the south node, this, I think this is going to be a really reflective time of like how you were in the past and what worked for you and what didn't work for you. What changes have you made since then? I mean, Pluto's been going through your guys' first house for a while now, so I'm sure there's a lot of deep reflection to do just with that alone. However, just really look at yourself and reflect back on like, what have you done? What have you created? What have you integrated before that's worked? And where do you also need to be stepping away from? What, where do you need to go away from the sense of yourself that isn't working anymore? And so I think that's gonna be pretty prolific, like pretty big. Um, however, that's like the first half of the month. The second half of the month is when we get pretty intense. So then on January 18th, we have Venus trining Mars. So as Venus is in your 12th house and she, you're exploring, you know, what you do value, exploring what you do want, exploring what you do believe, it's just feeling it, man, just being introspective as fuck. Hell of feeling it this month for you guys. Um, and especially because it's your birthday month too, so you're switching over to like a whole new, you know, you have new time lords, you're in a new perfection year, like... It, your birthday years, your birthday time is always crazy. Um, but as Venus trines Mars, where Mars is in your fourth house and you're talking about your family, talking about your private life, where there, there's changes there, there's action being implemented there, Venus trining Mars is kind of like, this is a great time to try new things. This is a great time to acknowledge more positive things, not repress what you believe or what you really want or what you value and share that. This is gonna be a big time to implement that with the people that you're living with, with your family, with your parents. Like, make positive, healthy changes. And I think this is just gonna come from a very inner level, like a very inside level for you guys. And I know you guys are Capricorns, you're probably hating this right now, but this is gonna be a very introspective and very reflective month for you guys. And there's a lot of opportunities to implement really positive changes that I think you'll definitely enjoy in the long run. However, we have the big day of January, and that's January 20th. Mars will square Saturn. That's going to be pretty rough. And we have the full moon in Leo, total solar eclipse, right as the sun enters Aquarius into your second house. 
So this full moon in Leo is the last of the eclipses that we have in Leo, and it's in your eighth house, man. This is really about like, all right, like don't like this is about not being afraid. The eighth house is about other people's money and resources. This is about death and taxes and all of that jazz. And as the moon goes into Leo, where you're gonna feel very like, you know, like. You, everyone's it's the full moon in Leo. Everyone's gonna feel very you know proud, uh, confident, excited. As this goes through your eighth house, I think this is gonna be more of excited to go through this purge, excited to go through this change, feeling confident that you have like the balls and the capability to actually like take the steps forward that you need to. And so I do think this full moon in Leo is gonna be important because Mars is squaring Saturn on the same day. And Mars is in the fourth house and Saturn's in the first. It's like, where's the problem with you and your family? Where's the problem with you and your parents? Or where's the problem that you have with getting yourself centered, getting yourself grounded and having the energy to do it, having the energy to engage? And I think as Saturn's in your first house where it just feels hard and it feels limiting and I think Mars is just going to feel like it's beating you up, like your family's beating you up, like it's just going to be a rough time. And I think this is just going to be a big time to realize like, You've got to implement more of that self-love. You've got to implement more of that shared love too. Like it's not just about giving you love. It's about putting it out there too because you'll eventually receive it even if it looks bad. So I do think that this, that the 20th is going to be quite a big deal for you guys. However, as we move ahead on January 21st, we have Venus conjoining Jupiter in your 12th house. And I do think that this is when a lot more of those, because, you know, the 12th house is all about repressed, unacknowledged parts of yourself, the subconscious, you know, your dreams and traditional, it's like hidden enemies. And it's also like, you know, dying in a foreign country. Um, that's a little extreme manifestation of the 12th house. But the 12th house, it's the house between worlds. It's the house that like, you know, go from nighttime, go from daytime. It's not always there for you to see right then and there. It's hidden. It's, uh, you know, it's also the blinding house. Like you don't always see it exactly. So as Venus hits Jupiter, this is going to be a positive thing, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be super prevalent and very showing at that moment. However, I do think a lot of things are going to come up in a very positive tone with what you do believe about yourself, really not repressing more positive things and more repressing what you believe or what you want to believe or wanting to learn more and grow more. Um, I do think that's going to be a pretty big deal. However, also on January 21st, Mercury conjoins the South Node, where this is happening in your first house, where Mercury again is in Capricorn. He's wanting to be efficient. He's wanting to be effective. He wants to serve the papers. He wants things to be mundane and make sense and be easy peasy. Um, as Mercury hits the South Node, like what we were talking about earlier with the Sun hitting the South Node, I think this is really going to be really understanding like where you need to step away from. What does moving forward look like? And that looks like you turning back and going, is this what you want? Like, is that what it is? Like, do you want to continue this? Is this what you want for yourself? But I also think that with Mercury being on the south node, this is about looking at your past and seeing how have you changed yourself? Like what we talked about earlier. Like, how have you done that before? Because it's not like you've never changed. You've done it before and it's just hard change is never easy but you got to look at the past and see what you've done before and see if you can implement that now see if that'll help you now but also realize that there's a path forward and where you're looking at right now you don't want to go anymore you want to look forward you don't want to go where you're at you want to change your direction so i think mercury hitting the south node will be again like a lot of introspection a lot of understanding of yourself however Last couple days of January on, Merc uh, on Mercury, on January 23rd, we have Mercury going into Aquarius, where it's going into your second house, where this has a lot to do more with money. This has a lot more to do with, you know, your possessions and stuff like that. And I think Mercury here is really trying to integrate, you know, your more, it's going to be more focusing on your money situation, which we'll be talking way more about in February when we go into Aquarius season. However, um, when, um, Mercury goes into Aquarius, I think that this is just going to be where your mindset's at. It's going to be on your values. It's going to be on your money. Your money's going to be on your mind. Mind's going to be on your money. Um, and you're also going to be more focused on your possessions and what you kind of have and wondering, you know, what do I want? What do I have? What do I, how do I integrate that with what I want to do? Moving forward, January 25th, though, Mars trines Jupiter. 
And as Mars trines Jupiter, where again, Mars is in your fourth house causing some issues, and Jupiter is in your 12th house of like hidden things, I do really think that at the end of the day, this is going to be a positive thing, because Mars is, Mars is still trying to accomplish something in that fourth house area. And as he trines Jupiter, I think Jupiter's got something, a secret message that he was kind of holding back to kind of like give Mars to where Mars can go, oh, now I understand how to integrate myself better within my family or within my home life or within, you know, your roommates or within your parents or, you know, just within yourself, being able to get yourself more established because you're going through a lot of change right now. This Mars in the fourth house is like recentering yourself on your energy and your power and being able to take the initiative to change. Then on the last, the, not the last day, but the last big thing of January is on January 29th, Mercury conjoins the sun and goes Kazemi in your second house. And I think this is about realizing what your resources are. It's like you're, you're making these changes, you're implementing them. What are your resources? Understanding what you have for your capabilities in order to make those changes and like being creative about it, finding different ways to connect things together. You may feel a little bit, you know, outcasted and alienated and feel like, you know, you've got these weird tools that don't think you can go to, that can go together. Like, it's going to feel like you don't have things to make them go together, you're, but you're going to have to get creative with how you put things together, how you integrate them, how you really just use your resources in the most creative and efficient way possible. And I really think that's what, that's your January. Your January is like, hey, look at you. Um, what's your problem and how do you need to change you? Um, so not to be so, you know, finger pointing at you guys, but... January is going to be pretty intense for you guys. Happy birthday. Um, good for you. You're going to new times. You know, you're ready to start up the new year. But January, it's going to be pretty intense for you guys. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and liking and sharing and commenting and subscribing. And I'll be seeing you guys for next month.